Hey YouTube, this is Rick with SF Actual. And today we're gonna to be taking the Remington 700. This is the SPS Tactical uh, AACSD, and that's because it has a threaded barrel on the end. And what we're gonna be doing is taking the Hogue stock uh, that it comes with when you first purchase it and moving the uh, assembly over into a Magpul Hunter 700 stock. And uh, as we go through this video, we'll tell you a little bit about uh, why um, this Hogue stock is just not as good as it could be. And to be able to just show you the uh, installation of exactly how that works. So let's get started. All right, before we get started, we wanna go over the tools that you're gonna to need to be able to make this happen. First off, you're gonna need a torque wrench or some type of wrench uh, that has the torque bit that you're gonna need. Um, this is a Wheeler uh, fat wrench uh, that you can get on Amazon. Um, I will put it down in the description if you're wanting to be able to get one of these yourself. But um, any type of torque wrench will work um, that you get. Uh, now just using an Allen wrench with a torque head, uh, the only issues that you'll run into is either over tightening or not tightening enough. That's why I highly suggest just investing in one of these. These run about 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, but one thing I like about this company specifically is you get a card that's showing exactly um, you know, what the torque specs were when they were testing them, the low limit, the upper limit. So you know, when you're getting into 10, foot, uh, 10 inch pounds, you're trying to get into 15 inch pounds, you might not be directly on 15. So this card really helps you be able to see what it did when they calibrated it. And then it comes with multiple settings, you know, different torque bits that you're going to need, different Allen and then flat heads, along with a quarter inch uh, bit that can fit um, sockets uh, if you're trying to fool around with um, scope mounts and things like that. So <clears throat> big takeaway on this gun, um, when Remington and Hogue got together to create this, uh, when they worked on the bull free float barrel, uh, that's the SPS tactical version, whether that's the AAC SD, like I was telling you, or just the, uh, the regular um, ta SPS tactical, is when they went with this stock and this chassis, uh, Hogue and Remington wanted to save money to make it cheaper. You can get this gun anywhere from about 530 to 630, and then beyond that when you get to retail stores. Um, but what they were trying to do was create a, a cheaper option for people. So in most chassis, there is an aluminum uh, piece that's in, uh, embedded in the polymer. And what that's supposed to do is stiffen up the chassis enough that you actually truly have a free float system. Now, if you're curious about what a free float system is, it's where the uh, chamber block and the barrel actually screw together. From then on there, there's nothing else that touches. And just being able to take a piece of paper, you can take one and just shove it down and be able to see that there, there should be clearance that works the way all the way through the barrel. Now, by not having the aluminum, you can actually, if I can get this a little bit close, you can see how this moves, okay? That's why other guys like to be able to switch out to a different stock, all right? Telling you one thing, we'll jump over to the Magpul Hunter 700 stock. Um, you can already see here that inside this one, there is the aluminum. Um, it is aluminum embedded and the polymer is just a little bit thicker, has more shapes and designs into it to just be able to make it a very good um, stock choice. Uh, I already put a bipod on it. Something else we'll go over too is um, this thing is customizable that you can get new cheek guards that rise up and you can also extend on your stock. Very good padding. Um, I've, sh I've shot these before. They feel very good when you shoot them. Uh, aeronomical grip works really well. And uh, one thing we're also going to be installing, <clears throat> and I'll do a, a quick part on this when we're installing that, is the Magpul uh, trigger well that lets you use the, um, the AICS uh, mags instead of having to make it internal uh, where you're only holding four rounds. You can hold up to five to ten or however many uh, rounds that the magazine is that you purchase. So we'll put that off to the side uh, just so you'll be able to see that in a little bit because a lot of guys like to go ahead and invest a little bit of money to go ahead and get that worked up. So first off, what I want to be able to show you and familiarize you with is uh, this piece right here. So this is the internal magazine well uh, where rounds go. And you can see on the trigger guard, uh, there's a button right here that you can press. By pressing that inward, uh, you're able to open up uh, the internal magazine well. Um, at that point, uh, that's how you could unload rounds if you had it, and it can be migrated directly over to the Magpul uh, stock. 
Um, but what you would do is have this in place, set up like that, and then you'd be able to load your four rounds inside of here. Um, uh, so you can see here that there's a back bolt and a forward bolt. The forward bolt's going to be a little bit shorter, back bolt's going to be a little bit longer. Um, you need to keep that in mind when you're taking this apart. Don't stress if you forget, just rewind the video. So what we first want to do is be able to get the correct Allen. Um, this is going to be a 5 32nd Allen bit that I'm using. And all I'm going to do is break these two bolts and we're going to get the rifle apart from the chassis. At this point, there's nothing holding on the barrel or the block from the chassis. So what we're going to do is lift up and you're going to see that we have our trigger. And then we also have this piece right here, which is the internal uh, magazine well that guides your rounds directly into uh, the chamber. So we're going to set the barrel off to the side for a minute. And then we're going to come down here and look. And just to show you against what the mag pool was, as you can see, all this is plastic. And this is very bendable. This is where precision shooters just don't really like using these Hogue stocks that they come with. Now, Hogue does make a stock that has an aluminum internal that you can switch to, but uh, if you're going to spend the money on that, why not go ahead and jump to a mag pool or some other type of round, I mean, uh, mag, uh, stock. So we'll just set this off to the side for a minute, and we'll move on to the next part. Now we are ready to jump over to <coughs> the uh, Hunter 700. Um, so I'll show you two things that's going on. And uh, so one thing we're going to want to do is to take a look at the bottom. And it comes with this little plastic piece right here, OK? This piece pops out if you're going to be putting on the Magpul um, bolt magazine, I mean, bolt action magazine well uh, that I do want to put into this rifle. Now, if you're wanting to move the internal one over, you didn't purchase this. Um, the way you would do it is this plastic piece is going to remain in here and then you're going to have to pull out, it just slides right out after the two bolts come out, the, um, the trigger guard and the, uh, the bottom of the entire uh, magazine well with the spring and everything. And basically with that plastic piece in there, this is just going to fall in uh, exactly as it did in the Hogue and then you're going to mount and um, screw it together and you're ready to rock and roll. We're not wanting to use that, so we're going to take it out and we're also going to have to take out this little plastic piece. Now this plastic piece can be a little booger to get out, but uh, pop that thing out and the way it's going to look then from there on is just completely open in here with our two holes and we're ready to put the receiver in. So, real quick, jumping over into the bolt action magazine well. So, a lot of guys will ask is what type of Remington 700 do I have? Do I have a long action or short action? And what that means is, is the type of rounds that you're going to be shooting. This is a 308. Um, so this is a short action uh, rifle. Uh, jumping into like uh, 30 out 6, um, some of the longer bullets, you're getting into a long action rifle. So you're going to want to pick up uh, this one. Uh, I'll put it in the parts description, I mean in the description below that you'll be able to see where to get this for the 308 and for the long action version. And what it's going to come with is its own trigger guard and trigger well uh, for the um, magazines themselves. It will come with a magazine. Uh, this one's a five round and then you're just able to use uh, the screws to be able to put that in place. So we want to go ahead and install this in place. So what we're going to do, oh, real quick, just to show this to you too as well. Um, so releasing the magazine, it's this piece right here. And what will happen is the magazine will slide up in there like this, click into place, and then it's, it's ambidextrous. You can pick whichever side, just push forward and the magazine pops right out. So we're going to take this once we remove that other plastic and just be able to slide this directly in and it will sit flush. If it's not sitting flush inside of here, uh, you did something wrong. So make sure that's sitting flush when you put that in there. Now we're ready to put the uh, chamber in and the barrel. So I'm going to leave it upside down. Now, keynote, if you're installing this, that's going to be holding the magazine, you're installing the Magpul magazine well, 
you will not need this anymore. Just to reiterate, I said it earlier in the video, you will not need this, but keep this saved if you ever wanna use the internal uh, magazine well again. So now we're ready to put the barrel in. Move this hoe out of the way. And we are about to be in business. So I'm gonna lay this down flat with the trigger facing directly up. And then I'm going to begin to slide down. And I'm going to pinch and flip over just to make sure everything is looking like I want it to look like. Once I see that it's that, I'm gonna take it and flip it over. And remember, long goes to the back, right? And then short goes to the front. And I'm just gonna be tightening it a little bit. We're not getting into the torque specs yet. So make sure that you're not gonna cross that at this point, you're gonna ruin your rifle. So what you wanna do is have your hand on here where you can wiggle just a little bit and feel when it gets started. You'll be able to feel it real easily when it does get started. If it's hard at this point, there's something wrong and you need to stop and figure out why you're starting to cross thread this. This should not be hard at all. It's just with my fingers. So now we're wanting to pull over, pull out our torque wrench, okay? Now this Wheeler, I told you that I really like it. Um, this guy can go up to, well, down to 10 and all the way up to, um, it'd be about 70, but really, realistically it's gonna be 60 that you're able to do. And all you do is you pull this out and you begin to screw. And you'll see that the red line begins to move. Now on these two bolts on the stock action, what we're wanting to do is move it to about 55 to 60. And you remember, I tell you that these things can uh, be a little uh, out of, uh, you know, have a little bit of tolerance in them. So that's why most things that you read on the internet, it will give you a rough estimate of either being 55 to 60, or if you're putting scope rings on, it's gonna be 15 to 18. That's just to help assist with the variances or the tolerances of each um, type of uh, torque wrench that you purchase. All right, so I'm about right underneath 60. I'm gonna come over here and find the, my 5 30 seconds bit. I'm actually gonna use the one that it comes with and make sure it fits for me. Yep, fits good. And then I'm gonna go until this thing clicks. Now some people say, you know, kind of like a car tire of, you know, tightening the front, tightening the back. You can do that. You wanna make sure they're feeling about pretty snug at the same time, uh, same amount until you get ready to really get it into the torque spec of when it clicks. All right, I do like to double check anytime I'm torquing something. All right, and I know that that's good. So, one thing to teach you if you buy and invest in your own torque wrench, the, there's a spring that's in here that makes this work. Anytime you're not using it or you're not gonna be using it for a little while, go ahead and break that thing back down to where there's no tension on it because that is what will get those springs out of tolerance and it will not be calibrated anymore and you have no clue uh, really where you're at anymore. Um, so just to reiterate on this, that these two bolts on the Remington 700, uh, if there is an aluminum internal body uh, to the stock that you're putting in, it's gonna be anywhere from 55 to 60 inch pounds. Um, now, some guys will say you have to use Loctite. Um, you know, some guys like to be able to take these apart. Um, 55 to 60 inch pounds is a pretty tight turn. Uh, I really don't see how your gun's ever gonna come apart. I've never heard of your gun coming apart. Now, if you wanna put Loctite on there, you can. Some guys talk about Loctite seeping into the metal, this, that, and the other. If you're ever gonna put on a uh, suppressor or muzzle um, brake, you're gonna to wanna to use Loctite anyway. Um, so, good rule of thumb. Um, really, it's up to you if you wanna use the Loctite or not. Uh, but I'm telling you, just by doing it bare like this, it, it's gonna to be totally fine. Um, now, at that point, we're gonna slide our bolt in. Now, I told you you press the detent when you're uh, removing the bolt, but to put it in, uh, it actually pops out of the way. I don't know if you heard that click. It comes down and now we're in business. Um, so give it a few checks and come over here, crank it up, pull it back, pull it down. 
check out the magazine. Now, you will see if you are using this system with the magazines, uh, when you put a mag in, it um, goes in very easily right now. I've seen when you have rounds in and it's pushing up against the bolt, uh, it can be a little hard. Um, so if you're ready to load around, you know, you put the magazine in, then you're gonna chamber around. But if you give it a good little push, even with rounds in it, the thing's gonna pop right in. Um, just to show you some, you know, tolerance from this free float system like we were with the Hogue, is plenty of room in here. A true free float system. Now, if you're wondering what a free float is, uh, which I should have went over earlier in the video, uh, it's just that you're able to um, not affect the barrel in any way. And from the block and on, uh, with your scope, you're always going to be uh, together and there's no variances to be able to bend that barrel, push that barrel, or do anything to that barrel due to your stock. Um, so that's it, guys. <laughs>